Hey, good day, everyone. This is so selects. It's coming back with another thought. What is fear? And how many of you are living in fear? It's it's something. Even the most like macho guy, right? The most tough guy even that person could be living in fear the what is fear uh, the definition comes to us as fear being the thought that something or someone can hurt you is fearful or can or can uh, just you know someone scary the thought it, it, it doesn't even say someone it says the thought that something or someone can hurt you and again it goes back it's in your mind fear is in your mind and the longer we live in fear the longer it will take for us to realize how much more happy we can be and how much more success we can obtain because a lot of people that have these ideas right people let's say you have an idea and it could be the greatest it's like you know that million dollar idea you have a million dollar idea but what stops you from taking that idea and running with it and making something out of that idea a lot of people will say it's bunny a lot of people will say it's time but what if I told you that it's none of those it's neither of those it's fear it's the fear of the failure the fear of the ridicule the fear of not making it the fear that people won't like that right the you're looking for um you're looking for that acceptance if you don't fail if you have a fear of failing then success will never come to you you won't know what success is until you actually fail i have a business right i have a little store i have a little online store at this point it's been it's been 10 months i say or nine months eight months since i i fully launched it on ebay and i still don't know if it's gonna fail or not i've been getting great feedback from ebay themselves but that still doesn't mean that it's gonna be successful i still don't know do i have the fear no just going with it let's see what happens right Have you noticed whenever <clears throat> you're you're doing something, you're just you're just being you, you're just having fun. Those are the times when you you do things easier, when you're able to do things because you're not thinking about about it being perfect, kind of like kids, right? You, you know, I watch my son on his skateboard and I see how he puts his feet and I and and I'm like, oh man, he's gonna fall. And I don't say anything, I stay quiet. But I can see how even though he looks so careless as he's doing that, he's able to accomplish what he's trying to do because he's letting go of the fear. He doesn't have that fear, he's just being playful, he's having fun. And a lot of times we we we're looking for we're looking for things that can that can uh you know it has to be perfect. You know, I tend to be that way, perfectionist. I won't do things, I won't release them to the to the general public if I if I don't like it myself, which is is wrong, you know, like other people might like what you have to offer and you won't know that until you bring it out. You have to let go of that fear. And oftentimes people that live in fear they either live in the past or they live in the present in, in the future. Sorry. They either live in the past or they live in the future. It's very hard for you to live in the present if you're living in fear. Why is that? 
why is it why why can you not if you're living in the present why can't there be fear in you what do you have to fear if you're living in the present is it death can, can you fear death no why would you fear death if you're living in the present there shouldn't be room in your mind for death if you're living in the moment if you're living in the now let me give you an example sometimes you're having a conversation with somebody and you're just you know you're going and you're talking and you're like four five i don't know maybe six ten sentences in and that person will just cut you off and be like hey yo check that out over there i i, I gotta admit i've been i've been uh, at fault with that too but doesn't that like like make you wonder like is that person really listening to me is that person paying attention there's a difference between listening and paying attention don't get those two confused anybody could listen they could say they're listening to you but are they really paying attention that's what matters you know in school i used to get in trouble a lot because my teachers would be doing their lecture and i would be in my on my desk just drawing i love to draw well i you know i used to draw a lot but i love to draw i'm you know i'm creative um and i would get in trouble because uh they thought i wasn't paying attention just because i wasn't looking at them just that whole thing keep your eyes on me oh if, if you're looking at me then i know you're paying attention that's not true that's not true at all somebody could be staring at you dead center in your eyes and that does not mean they're paying attention whatsoever same thing with the with the school right my example i would be drawing in class listening to what the teacher was saying and they would try to put me on the spot try to make me look like a fool and they will call out my name and my name back then I, I you know whatever they will call out my name and and they will tell me what did I say repeat what I said they wanted me to repeat it word for word and guess what I would repeat it word for word from beginning to end every single thing that they said in their lecture I was able to repeat it word for word as I was drawing because it doesn't require you to look at somebody to pay attention yes it's like a traditional sign of respect right here we go again with the traditions what matters is that the person pays attention to what they what that other person is saying and that person is not living in the present that person is living either in the future or living in the in the past and how is it that you live in in fear if you're not how is it that you live in the past or in the future and, and live in fear? How is that so? Well, for one, let's say you get some, some somewhat bad news and you just blow it to the worst proportions that you can ever imagine. You just automatically, the first thing, the first thought in your mind is the worst possible case scenario. Like it's so it's so ridiculous it's far-fetched like like you over exaggerate i've had people like that you know i know people like that you'll tell them one little thing and they just jump to the worst possible case scenario and they just blow it out of proportion it's like it makes me laugh like why why does your mind automatically jump to that future we're not there yet we're not we're here the problem is right here at the moment it's not over there now you know we're talking about something right now so why jump to the future why think about the past stay in the now whatever issues you have if if you have like i said going back to the the million dollar idea what you have is your idea that's all you have you don't have money and you don't have time but all you have is an idea work with that now don't try to like okay let me go get the money first and then let me go do this idea i have by then somebody else will come up with that same idea and steal it ha has that happened to you have you ever had such a bright idea and then next thing you know it's on tv somebody came up with that the concept of a restaurant or or a toy or whatever it is somebody took it from you and you're mad because you're like oh man they took my idea why because you just sat there with your idea you didn't work on what you had at the moment you got to work with what you have at the moment and then 
when the obstacles come, then you deal with that. You can't be better prepared for anything that life comes at. When you're dealing with life, there's no preparation. So how can you prepare yourself for that moment in the future where let's say, oh, if you leave, if you go that direction, you, you'll probably get in an accident. You know, I have, I drive people around all the time and I have these people that don't do this. This is just a tip, like a little side note, but do not tell your driver where and how to drive if you're the passenger in a Lyft or an Uber car. Let that man do what he's doing. Let him do it. You don't know that man. It's a stranger. If you talk to that person, that person will probably get nervous, get distracted. Next thing you know, you probably get lost or, or something may or something else may happen. Just let that man focus on what he's doing at the moment and that person's gonna get you to your destination. Why do you say, oh, if you go that way, we're gonna get a lot of traffic. Or if you haven't been down that street, how do you know there's a lot of traffic down that street? You could use, do you have Waze? Waze will tell you what has traffic or not. So why are you worried about that moment? And then you become stressed. People get easily stressed nowadays, right? That simple little thing can get them like super, 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 super stressed out. We need to let go of those things. Worry about what's happening in front of you at the moment. Focus on what's in front of you at the moment. Um, and who do you think lives in most fear? Do you think that people that can't let go of their past, do you think they live in the most fear? Or do you think that the people that are always thinking about the future, they're worried about what's to come? Because really, when you're, when you're thinking about the future, you're kind of worried about what's to come, right? There's a verse in the Bible that I'm never going to forget. And that verse says, Look at the birds in the sky, in the heavens. They don't reap. They don't sow. But yet, my Father who is in the heavens feeds them. So why do you worry about what you will wear the next day? Or what you will eat the next day? That's just that perfect example. Do you think birds are thinking about the cold? Or do you think they're they're worried about where, where the, they don't even know where their next meal is coming from? But they still eat. Oh yeah, there's another part to that verse. Now, you that are worth more than the birds in the heavens. You that are worth more than the birds in the heavens. Don't you believe that our Father will clothe and feed you? Do you think you're worth more than the birds? Don't worry about the little things. Don't. Sometimes those little things that you hold on to, that's where you're that's the fear that you're holding on to. Let go. Be free. Fear is never going to allow you to be a free person. Let go of of the of the tomorrow. Don't think about that. Worry about it when it comes. Cuz what what do they say? Tomorrow is never promised, right? So why are you focused on tomorrow? So many people do that. Like they're focused about tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is Wednesday. They're so focused on Wednesday when Tuesday, it's barely one right now here where I am. It's 1.30 in the afternoon and you have people worried about tomorrow, tomorrow Wednesday. We're so far from it, but people like to jump ahead. And that's another thing that, that causes imbalance, I believe, in everything, in everything. When you have people rushing, like nowadays, I'm sure you notice, well, at least in Los Angeles, I know it's different in, in other cities, other states, other countries, where their life, the pace of their life is so, so tranquil. It's just smooth and peaceful. 
it's not chaotic like the big cities like Los Angeles. Everybody's rushing to be somewhere. Everybody is rushing to be somewhere. And I've seen so many accidents. And I wonder to myself a lot of times as I'm driving on the freeway, sometimes I'm up early. It's like seven in the morning, eight in the morning, and I see an accident, a big accident. Not just a little, you know, fender bender. Big accidents where a car probably rolled over or spun out. And I say, how can you how can you start your day like that? How can you start in a frantic sense or a frantic state of mind? It's like you're in a panic. Why are you why would that person need to drive at that speed? Because they're late for work? <laughs> why are they late for work? Because your life is unorganized. If you want to organize your life, if you feel that you're you're in that frantic state every day where you have to rush because you don't, you you need to get there in time or something, whatever it is. I, I know people that are that are so frantic like that. Like they don't relax. It's like relax, breathe. You know. If you feel that you're one of those people, again, it all starts from inside of you. You need to look inside of you first. You can't expect the surroundings to fix themselves so that you can do things correctly, right? I've another example. I've had passengers that jump in the car and they get in as soon as they get in. They don't even they don't even greet you. They just jump in the car and they tell you, "Oh, I'm running late. Can we go? Can we get there fast?" And I I often I'll say, "Yeah, I love to drive fast." But like a lot of times I ask myself and or I just say it in my mind like, "What does your being tardy have anything to do with me? Why would you want to put that weight on somebody else's shoulder it's your problem a lot of us do that we try to put our problems our weight on other people we find ways to do that you know what does that person being late what do they have to do what does that have to do with me why do i have to run the risk of getting a speeding ticket or a, a cross light ticket because you're late now I now it's my problem that you're late. No, I'm, it's not my problem that you're late. Don't throw your problems on other people. <laughs> Fix your own problems. And instead of looking outside, look inside. Always inside. What, whatever is bothering you about certain things, look inside first. Maybe that's where the problem is. It's not on the outside. It's on the inside. We got to stop living in fear. 